a weapons state machine for your Gato FPS. Let's jump into it. In the last video, we already created a basic weapon resource and weapon system so we can load a pistol scene to our player in the game. Now we're going to add the ability to be idle, firing, or empty when you run out of ammo using a state machine. We're gonna start by creating a bunch of scripts. The first one being our weapon state machine. This is the same idea that we used for our general movement state machine in the first episode. We'll go to our assets folder, our weapons folder, and then our scripts folder. And we're gonna create a new script and then weapon state machine. This is a very small and basic script. It's just gonna hold a reference to our weapon controller. And we do this so every state script that we put underneath as a child of our weapon state machine it's gonna automatically have a reference to our weapon controller. And then we're gonna create our base weapon state script. Open that up, add our class name, call it weapon state. And then we need to add these lines. First, a uh, weapon controller variable that will hold the reference to our weapon controller. And then we need to set that reference using our weapon state machine. Now I'm using a unique name. If you notice in the player controller, We've got a unique name for our movement state machine. We're gonna do the same thing. So it's gonna be called the weapon state machine. It's a unique name. We can get that reference super easy that way. I explained this in the very first episode, but we're gonna use this weapon state as the base for all of our individual weapon states. Every single one of them is going to extend from this state. So all that means is weapon controller, Will already be referenced. Now that we have that, we need to do some prep work within our weapon controller. This is from the, the last episode where we created our, our spawning of our weapon model. First thing is we need to add a reference to the state chart that we're gonna add. We'll add that as a weapon variable. We'll call that weapon state chart and it will be a state chart node. And then we're also gonna add a current ammo variable. This will be an integer and we're going to set this current ammo whenever we start our game. So our current ammo for now, because we're not saving anything, it's just going to be the current weapon max ammo. Now, I don't know what current ammo is, so let's get rid of that in. This current weapon is coming from our custom weapon resource we created in the previous episode. So this weapon resource, in fact, let me go ahead and open that up. It's a, uh, a list of different export variables and it's, it's just data for our weapon. For example, we by default have a, a pistol for our name, base damage that that pistol can do. We have our max ammo. And again, that's what we're grabbing. And this is why this is so cool. So if I'm in the weapon controller and we wanna get the current ammo and we're using max ammo for that, whatever weapon resource we have in there, and it's gonna do the same thing when we add switching, it'll set that current ammo to our, our max ammo, or we can get the relevant number that we need for our specific weapon, just using that resource. Our spawn weapon model is just us loading our, our weapon scene. And after that, we need to add a couple of more functions because we wanna be able to fire our weapon. So we're gonna do a can fire function and this will return a Boolean. And this is just gonna check whether our current ammo is greater than zero. If it is greater than zero, then we can still fire. If not, it'll be false. And we'll check that within our fire weapon function. So we'll check if can fire current ammo minus one. And then for now, because we don't have any, you know, projectile or hit scanning setup that's coming. We're just gonna print and we'll say, you fired, congratulations, you fired ammo. And let's put our current ammo under there. Now this will be after we subtracted. So it'll be whatever ammo we have left. Next, we need to create some actual state scripts. We'll go ahead and go to our weapons, our scripts, and let's add a new folder. In this case, it'll be our states. And remember, we're going to actually inherit here from our weapon state. We're gonna call this one our idle state. I'm gonna copy and paste what I have and then we'll, we'll go through it here. So within our idle state, we're gonna check if we have our weapon controller set. If we don't, we don't wanna get errors. So we're just gonna return. We're gonna exit out of this. And if we do, we're gonna have, if you press the fire button and 
the weapon controller can fire. Remember, this is checking if we have our, our ammo there. Then we're going to send an event to on firing. That's going to be the next state that we add. If the ammo is empty, meaning we, we run out, then we're going to send the event to on empty. And empty is you ain't got any ammo left. That's it. That's our, our idle state. That's all we need. Now we can add our next one, and that's going to be our firing state. So the state chart has a couple of different signals that it can fire. It can fire a signal whenever it enters that state, and it can also when it exits, and it also does a processing and a physics processing. And that's just the difference between the, the processing per frame and the physics processing, which happens at whatever your, your physics tick rate is. So for our firing state, say we were in the idle state, we press the fire button, which we're going to add in a minute, and we can fire, we've got the ammo, then we're going to go to the on firing event. So once we enter this state, again, we'll check if we have the weapon controller just as a safeguard, and then we're going to immediately fire. And we're firing our, our fire weapon function within the weapon controller. We're separating the logic here. The, the weapon firing doesn't happen within the states. That's happening within the controller. We're just managing when these functions are used within the state machine. So we fire that weapon, and that just means we'll check if we can fire again, and we'll subtract our ammo, and we'll say, yeah, you fired. In the future, we'll actually have that projectile and the hit scanning. And then within the physics processing, again, checking for the weapon controller, and then we're just checking our ammo again. If our current ammo is less or equal to zero, then we, we've run out. We gotta go to empty, which we'll create next. Otherwise, we'll just go back to idle. So we're ready if we can fire again. The next state we need is the empty state. So as I've been saying, the, the empty state is you've run out of ammo. Nothing super complicated because we don't have any reloading or anything yet. This is really just serving as a place to go. There's not any logic happening here yet. So in our player controller, let's make a little bit more room up here. The first thing we can do is add our state charts. Now this will be the state chart for our weapon controller. Call that the weapon state machine. And remember, we need to make this unique so we have access to it. So we'll do that. Next, we add our individual states. Now within the state chart add-on, you have to go to a uh, 2D or 3D viewport in order to get these buttons over here. First, we're gonna add a parallel state for our root, and then we need three atomic states beneath that. And that's gonna be for our firing state and our empty state. Let's go ahead and set up our transition states as well. We just add these under each one of these. We also need to set the event, and we did name those already within our state scripts. I'm just using the convention of a lowercase on and then capitalize whatever the state is. So it'll be on idle for that. And then we'll add our firing and on empty. Once you have those three set up, we're gonna create our sibling node here, just like we did with our state machine. And this will hold our weapon state machine. I totally named this incorrectly. This should be the weapon state chart. That'll work better. And this is the unique, not this one. That's my error. So I'll make a note of that in the description. Once we have that parent, we're gonna add our children. This parent state machine also needs to have the state machine that we added because that holds the export variable so we can reference our weapon controller. We'll assign that. And then each one of these now, the idle, the firing, the empty, they all have that reference to the weapon controller. Next, we need to connect the signals from our state chart into those individual state machine scripts. So we go to the idle state. We need to have a reference to the processing signal. So we'll take that and then connect it. And when you make these signal connections, it's gonna give you a receiver method just sort of automatically filled in, but we've already created it. So we can pick and then pick on idle state processing and select okay. And you should have a nice little green icon there pop up. That's telling you you've connected that signal. We'll do the same thing for our firing state. We need an entered and a physics processing. Do the same thing for your empty state. So all of the signals should be good and set up ready to go. Now we need to add our input because we don't have an input to fire. In our idle state, we're checking if we are pressing the fire button. So go to your input map within your project settings, 
Should be called primary fire, but we're just gonna call it fire. The last thing we need to do is double check all of our export connections. I think I've missed one and it's the state chart. So we need to assign within the weapon controller our state chart reference. So it knows where we're sending all these events to. That should do it. I promise I try not to mess up, but maybe it's helpful to, to see a mess up every once in a while. The issue here is I've done the root as a parallel state. And I had based that off of the state chart because I had the root and a bunch of different compound states. It needs to be a compound state. So the parallel state runs everything at the same time. And I basically just was idle firing and empty all at the same time. And that did not work. So this needs to be a compound state. So we're gonna add that in kind of a roundabout way here. We'll shift all of that into the compound state. We'll name that root, move the root up and delete that parallel state because that's not what we want. All right, now that we're in the compound state, make sure we set our default. That's the thing that I didn't catch. So our initial state's gonna be idle. And now when we run it, we're not firing at all at the same time. So let's click our firing button. We fired, ammo is now 11, it's 10, nine. We'll go all the way down to empty and now we can't fire anymore. So that was the fix. We now have a fully operational weapon state machine. It's super basic right now. All we can do is be idle. We can shoot, nothing even comes out, but we actually have working ammo, which is pretty cool. We got our max ammo set and it's subtracting until we get to zero and then we can't do anything. And that's that's the power of the state machine. We're gonna keep working on this and in the next episode, we're actually going to shoot something. We're gonna do hit scan and projectiles and we're gonna start building out this weapon system because that's kind of the most important thing for a FPS. As always, the source files for this are available on my website to members as part of the Gato Engine FPS development kit that we're developing. This kit contains every FPS mechanic we're making in all of these videos. I really, really appreciate the support. It, it's what makes these videos possible. You can also get the completely free starter kit if you're starting from scratch, and that's also on my website. By the way, I'm also working on my own retro FPS game. Children of Kronos, it's inspired by the classics of the 90s FPS genre. I'm really excited about it. I'll catch you in the next one, and until next time, Keep creating.